Okay, so what's the difference between any level lift and air ride? We have two trucks here and I'm gonna break it down. So first off, we'll start off with air ride. So with this system, this particular truck is a Kelder. Um, the way that this design here on over here is that just the height of the truck by the airbag. So depending upon how much air is in the bag is gonna depend on the height of the truck. Now also depending upon how much air is in the bag is gonna depend on your ride quality. So the more air in this bag, the taller the truck, the stiffer the ride. The less air in this bag, the softer the ride and the lower the truck. So in the realm of adjustable suspension, these technically do go up and down, but when you're driving them, you have like a one or two inch range for ride height that the truck's gonna ride good and be somewhat in, in alignment. And I say somewhat because when you get down to the front end components, we're still running all the same stuff that you would on a fixed or static lift system. So our track bar or pan hard bar is still a fixed unit, connects to the frame on the driver's side and the axle on the passenger side. And same thing with steering components. We have our drop pitman arm and our steering arm that will connect at the pitman arm on the driver's side and over at the knuckle on the passenger side. So as this truck goes up and down with the pressure in the bag, the body is actually going to adjust to the frame. And we'll cut to that in a minute just so you can see how it works. But so when I say somewhat in alignment, when you line the air ride trucks up, when the, when the systems are installed, you basically set your ride height. So once you set your ride height for where, what you want for, I guess, overall cushion and spring rate, um, you're able to dial in where your track bar sits side to side and then also where your steering sits side to side. So it's a pretty unique system for a soft ride. Um, not really a unique system for adjustable. You can raise it up and down to get in and out of it. You could put it all the way up for a show. It looks cool. You can put it all the way down to pull in and out of a garage, but you're not going to really be able to steer or drive at any sort of speed with it at a lower, uh, lower height setting. Um, so we'll go to the back of the truck and I'll show you we have the similar setup. Now this is on a 2019 uh, Dodge Ram 2500. Um, so the setups are pretty similar if you're going to do this on a Ford. Um, they do have these systems for the back of the GM trucks and the solid front axle swap the front. You kind of get something relatively similar. Um, so this is also set up on a fixed track bar system. So we basically have this bracket that's going to be fixed to the axle and then it's run to this side. Um, basically as a drop. So this is a stabilizer bar. So this looks a little bit complicated. All this does is this is a bracket that mounts to here. This is not strong enough on its own. So it runs the stabilizer bar to the other side of the axle just to put strength to this bracket. This is your actual track bar. So because of this angle being a lot less than it was in the front, um, when the truck goes up and down, you don't get so much shift. So most of the shift on these is going to be more noticeable in the front than it is in the back. And then we have this big, massive sway bar and drop bracket setup. Uh, going over to the side. In the back, we're running a short length, very similar like we would on the factory setup. Um, these are adjustable to set your um, pinion angle. So this will adjust in and out, this will adjust in and out by loosening up these and twisting the bars. So same idea on the top. Loosen that bolt, loosen that bolt, twist that bar, and you're able to run the entire axle forward and back and then pitch your pinion angle up or down. And then these are mounted on a drop bracket. Um, this is the actual drop bracket. This is just a support bracket for strength. Um, just because this one doesn't have enough mounting points to keep it rigid, so they add this. Um, also on Air Rider, on this particular system, there's two different setups on these. Kelderman uses a lot of um, ride height adjustment components, which is what you'll see here. There's one of these um, uh, ride, I'm sorry, level sensors on all four wheels. So this is wired into our control system. 
Um, we'll get to that in, the min in a minute. Uh, now these are also running a reservoir shock, just to give a little bit of a better ride. These trucks do ride pretty good. Um, same thing on the front, we got a resin shock. And then we have our ride height sensor here. So this is on all four corners. And when we come to the front, our four link bars are gonna be adjustable in a similar manner, where these pinch bolts get loosened, and then you're able to rotate this bar um, once you loosen the jam nut. And that will move your axle forward and back. And that'll also allow you to adjust for caster angle. Okay, so you can see here the air compressor kick on. Uh, it's at 108 PSI for the total system pressure. And then we have our fronts set at 69 PSI, back set at 47 and 45. Um, so these are set for ride height. So as you, basically with the truck, I'm gonna stand up here, because not really hitting the controls is gonna be the more important part of the video. It's gonna be watching the actual vehicle move. So with this, we're setting at ride height right now. So our steering wheel is relatively straight. The truck is relatively in alignment. Um, now when we air this down, I'm gonna stand back a minute so that the board doesn't get me. You can see this truck move probably about four, maybe four and a half inches and our wheel sitting more at the two o'clock position than at the 12 o'clock position. Now we got 148 PSI in the bag, so we'll see if this will air all the way up on one shot. You see the back, it doesn't move, just in the front, because we're moving our steering geometry. And now we're back to probably a nine or 10 o'clock position with this all the way up. We got our, we're down to 85 PSI in the bag. And this, this this has two pumps on it. This has two Vire 45C, so this is picking up relatively quick. And then we put this back down to our normal ride height level. doing thing to level out and now we're back relatively in alignment we're at 103 psi i'll probably air up in about another 20 to 30 seconds so to recap on this we're all the way up our steering wheel is going to be like this and our alignment's going to be off the front of the truck's actually going to be shifted to the passenger side relative to the axle when we're all the way down we're not going to have enough air in the bag to really drive it and the truck's going to be shifted to the driver's side with my steering wheel sitting like this um, so from a, so years ago, probably going back five, six years, this is what was available. If you wanted something that went up and down, you put airbags on your truck and you went through this. Now there's other manufacturers, I'm just gonna preface this a little bit, there's other manufacturers that do this a little different, so it's not so drastic. The same principle still applies. Um, they've just done a little bit better with their geometry, so it's not quite as drastic for that, that up and down shifting and they got their um, uh, caster angle style then a little bit better. Um, but this is one of the OG kicks. It's been out for a long time. Um, so there's the rundown on, on Air Ride. So if you're looking for something that has that cool factor, has the sound when you hit the, the switch and it airs down, um, and then, uh, you know, softer ride, automatic load leveling. So when you hook a trailer up to it, it will adjust automatically in the back. Um, and just one ride height to set it at this is a good option so this is the kind of the originator of like what adjustable suspension could be um but it leaves a lot left to be desired if you're looking for actual adjustable suspension so stepping away from air ride and going to the any level now that we've covered this um, which is basically this is very similar to a static lift static four link but instead of having a spring or a coil over we're running air 
and that air we're able to adjust the capacity in the bag to lift the truck up and down it's really the only difference there's not a lot of magic there um, now this is a uh, 2019 f-350 platinum with any level system in it um, these you can run full down full up and you're going to be riding on a coilover so right now we're at full up and when we go to bring the front down you don't see or you see that we don't have any movement in the steering wheel it does not do that 10 to 2 swing or 2 to 10 swing as you go through that range of motion plus it moves a lot quicker and you can stop this wherever you want so you can set this ride height at uh you know four inches six inches eight inches ten inches whatever just wherever you let off the switch is where the truck stays but when you go full back up, the steering wheel stays straight. So the way that it does that, and we'll pan to the video, or we'll pan to the, the front end styles here, is that when you run the truck up and down, your front end components are gonna stay straight through that linear motion of, or through the linear link of the triangulation. So instead of running side to side on a fixed unit, it's done through that triangulated link. And then going back over to the, to, the, to the air ride system, everything being fixed, you can see how this is actually going to shift. So instead of having an airbag, we're running a, or this truck's running a um, eight inch travel, 2.5 can coil over. So regardless of where this is mounted in that range of motion, you have the travel, the eight inch travel can coil over at its capacity. Um, so this truck is sitting all the way up, it's at 13 inches. Now when you move this truck down, which is going to be adjusting this lever arm using this hydraulic cylinder. And I'll go over the, the actual motions of this here in a minute. I just wanna explain the difference in the componentry. So the ride height is adjusted on this truck based on where this lever arm sits. So this is sitting at full up and you want to bring the truck down. This hydraulic cylinder will compress. This lever arm will move up which will bring the axle closer to the frame and ultimately lower the truck or bring the body closer to the axle. Um, now, in doing that, you're still on an eight inch travel can coil over. So the problem becomes the size of the wheels you have on it. So if you go and you drop this all the way down and you got a 42 inch tire, you still have the same ride capability, but you just have some different, uh, you're not gonna be able to turn very well with the tire. So similar to an air ride truck, when you drop it all the way down, you can go forward and back in a straight line with the big wheels on it. Now the difference with this and the air ride system is that with an air ride, when you drop it all the way down, you're out of alignment and you really don't have any ride to be able to run it down the road. So you can move it around, that's about all you can do. With the any level, when you drop it all the way down or to a lower ride height setting, you can put a different wheel and tire setup on this and you basically have a stock truck. So when you bring this all the way down, put a factory wheel and tire on, you're sitting at the height of a level kit and you still have full travel on an eight inch coilover. So from a usability standpoint, uh, this is a more logical system. Uh, Cause when you do have it all the way down, you have a normal truck. When you have it all the way up, you got a lifted truck you don't really have any limitations other than the size of the tire in the wheel well and your turning when the truck is down. Your ride's gonna be the same regardless of where it is in that range of motion. Um, now, going to the front for the steering, because you know, we're kind of thinking, well, on the Dodge or on the air ride systems, everything's fixed. So with that fixed system, wouldn't this have that same um, that same effect where you lower and raise the truck and the body shifts relative to the axle? And the answer is no, and here's why. So the steering and the panhard systems are done on triangulated links. So instead of connecting your steering bar directly to your knuckle, or in this case on a factory Ford system, it would be connected right above here on the tie rod. It is connected to this 
um, to the fabricated bar that goes on your uh, on your tie bar and it's done through triangulation so looking at this to this this is how our brain typically works is going all right this we're pushing the pitman arm it's pushing this now this is a slide link how is it actually moving anything if that's a slide link it's done through triangulation so this point's actually connected to this point through this triangulated link and this is just basically a, an arm to trail it um, so to keep this in a motion or keep this in a position in which the triangulation would allow it to close otherwise it would be flopping in and out so this is just to keep everything linear is what the slide link is for but this is done through triangulation so this point's connected to this point this point connected to this point so same thing on your track bar so as you go up and down you don't get that everything stays linear um where everything stays in alignment so it's kind of a unique or not a kind of a unique feature the unique feature of any level so and then we go to the back Fords typically have a leaf spring on these. Uh, leaf spring gets taken out, run the same setup as the front with a lever arm and a coilover. So with our setup in the back here, we're still running an eight inch travel king coilover in the back. These are dual rate so that we don't lose any uh, load capacity and these are variable. There's different spring rates available. There's also another system available for these too for the dualies that puts an airbag subframe under these. So if you do a lot of towing, um, you could run that airbag system, and then that would give you the same uh, towing capacity as a, as a factory setup or more. Um, so, and in the back here, there's no track bar. So, with these trucks standard, there's a leaf spring. Uh, on the heavier tow packages, there's a uh, sway bar. Um, because the leaf springs are removed, the sway bar has been removed. We have about 13 inches of travel in the back here. 13 or 14 inches of travel in the back here. Um, so everything is kept in alignment with triangulation. So if we go up to the, the, not the front, but we go up to the side of the truck here. We have these triangulated links. So these adjust very similar to like the ones do on the, on the air ride truck, except instead of being completely linear, this one pitches back towards the center of the frame. So because it does that, it keeps the axle in alignment this way. And then this one's allow it to roll forward and back to keep your appropriate pinion angle. So you still have all the same adjustment, but it gives you some side to side adjustment as well. So that way you can make sure this is dialed in side to side with the axle. And then you can use this to, to pivot uh, forward and back for pinion angle. Now adjusting these in and out, you can also slide your axle forward and back in the wheel well uh, to get appropriate alignment. And then in the back, for our right head adjustment, it's the same thing as the front. We have a hydraulic cylinder that moves a fabricated lever arm um, where that co can coil over mounts to. So as far as adjustable suspension goes, any level takes the cake because you can run it all the way down, put a factory wheel and tire on it, put a smaller wheel and tire on it, and you still have full use of the truck. There's no limitation in ride height other than limitations on turning based on the size of the tire. So like when we take this truck and drop it all the way down, You can see in the front, if we go to turn this tire, here, come on up here so you can see how tight this actually is. We do have some spacers in here to keep this from going all the way down so we don't run contact on the tire to the fender, but there's not a lot of room in here. So when this is full down and you go to turn this wheel, um, you're gonna catch the fender or catch the front bumper. There's a little bit more space up here. Bodyguard makes a, you know, something with more of a gap because you're building stuff for lifting trucks specifically. Um, but with a stock wheel and tire package or a smaller wheel and tire package, they say take these 30 by 16s off and put a set of um, like 22s and 35s. It, now you can run this at stock height as a stock truck, you have full usability. Um, another thing too is that we're not gonna, another difference between the air ride and the any level is that this is all done through a electric pump. Um, that will pressurize the hydraulic system. So it's not an air system. We're not waiting for anything to, to air up. Um, which granted with the air system, if you take a factory setup that you're gonna buy like a can setup or just a normal stock setup that you're gonna put on a truck, you're probably gonna wanna run bigger airlines, bigger compressors, bigger tanks, if you wanna have any sort of functionality to it, uh, as most of those are designed to just kinda air up and sit there. 
instead of showing them off. Now with these, you're basically limited to a charge on the battery. So when the truck is driving, there's a self-charging system that will charge that 24 volt uh, battery system because this runs on a whole separate unit that's up underneath the truck. So this particular one's up in the bed. I'm not gonna get into that for this video. There's a bunch of other videos that will show all the um, hydraulic setups and how they work. Um, but it's a 24 volt standalone system um, that does charge while you drive. It also has a shore power connection. So if you have the truck parked overnight, you can plug it into the wall in the garage uh, and bring that up to, to full power charge again. Um, so that's really a quick rundown in the differences between the two systems with an air ride system versus the any level. Um, they both get deemed generally as an adjustable suspension setup, but after going through the explanation, you can see why one is adjustable suspension, the other one is just more of a, a vanity type kit. So if you have any questions on this, you can call us at the shop. Uh, you can reach out to me at Southern Diesel, um, or you can reach out to any level lift directly, and we'll put those links at the bottom of the video here.